Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech and we're going to be focusing on MOSFET temperatures at various hash rate firmware modifications like the 250 giga hash, 260, all the way up to as far as we can push it without adding heat sinks to those MOSFETs, which isn't going to be very far, but I just want to get accurate MOSFET temperatures. We got two uh, thermal probes or thermistors going to two of the inner MOSFETs and I just want to make sure first off we're going to take this off add some heat sinks which i'm going to bring you over there right now uh, to show you the size and the measurements to the back side of the chips and then we're going to add a 120 millimeter fan right here just sitting on top of them just to try to keep things cool and open so that way we can make sure we're getting accurate measurements of the mosfet as we continue to push this particular device further and further with the firmware mods uh, provided by T-Swift and company. In case you're new to the channel, just basically have some thermistors capped and taped to the top of the MOSFETs. We don't have, you know, they didn't install a thermistor inside the MOSFET itself, so it's not going to be the most accurate. These thermal pads that are sitting on the back side of these chips are 1.5 millimeter. We're going to be using these heat sinks, right, to try to dissipate that heat as much as possible got some thermal tape that I'm going to be utilizing here it's very thin thermal tape I think it's like 0.5 millimeter maybe not even that 0.2 millimeter sorry if the camera got blurry and we're just gonna put the heat sinks along the way here the thermal pad was getting really really hot so the back side of these chips were getting really really hot and you can see uh, where the six sit so one's right here another one right there another one right there and where the thermal pad is actually getting stuck on there that's how hot it's getting so it's literally ripping off and sticking to the back side of the chip. All right, so this is about the janks, jankiest setup I ever have. You can see the heat sinks down there, uh, the MOSFETs and the thermistors in between right there. Uh, we have everything kind of set up and idle with no power going through it. We're sitting at 30 degrees Celsius, about ambient air temperature. We actually have some fan controllers here. I have it on low. These are old Silverstone manual fan controllers, three pin, but I just got to connect it via six pin to Molex. And if we power it on right now, uh, we just want to try to keep an eye on it because now that these heat sinks um, is not a full on plate, it doesn't have as much surface area. So we're going to have to offset that with airflow to try to keep it as close to what the plate and the small fans would have represented and keep an eye on the MOSFET temperatures as we continue to update each firmware from the 250 giga hash to the 260 to the 270 to the 280, so on and so forth. And let's see what those actual MOSFET temperatures are down there. So it's been a little bit of time, try to do all the testing with the same fan speed, the same variables, same variance and ambient air temperature uh, to try to mitigate as many variables as possible. And you can see right now, we're only getting around 284 giga hash, 30 minutes sitting around 240 giga hash. We're hitting some type of thermal limit because I'm not turning the fans up. I wanted to test really the, the primarily the MOSFETs and we're hitting, I believe thermal limits on the CPU. Our hottest chip right now is chip number one. Um, it's running almost at 70 degrees Celsius. I saw 71 uh, at some point in time. So definitely running hot. You could see our clocks have picked up and I have some data for you. So this is the 250 giga hash firmware. And you can see we're getting 266, not 250. So whatever the hash rate is or the firmware version that you choose, like a 250, you're going to get a little bit above that. 260, you're going to get a little bit above that. MOSFET temperatures of 54.2 and a power draw of 134 watts. Then we move up to the 270 or 260 giga hash, which we were getting 275. So again, 250, you're going to see more like 260 something. Uh, the 260, uh, you're going to get like 275, but now we're hitting diminishing returns because we're not, we don't have heat sinks on the MOSFETs and we don't have good cooling. I need to replace the thermal paste because even the chip number one on the 260 giga hash one was getting up to 67.4 degrees Celsius, but MOSFETs 56.1 power draw around 140 uh, watts. Then stepping up to the 270, we're getting around 287 giga hash. Uh, again, that chip temperature is hitting that 70 degree range. Uh, outboard temperature is still looking pretty good. Uh, MOSFET 57.4, 144 watts at the wall. 
And then the 280 was 150 watts. Sorry for the blurry image. And definitely the MOSFETs are getting up there, 58 degrees Celsius. Um, and that's why I was saying the outboard temperature can kind of give you a reading on uh, what the MOSFETs are looking like. They're not too far off from one another. But again, hitting that thermal limit or where it's not a thermal limit. I know the chips can get a little bit hotter. But, you know, it feels like once the chips are hitting 70, they don't want to perform as well. Hence the reason why we're stuck right now, even though we got the 300 gigahash firmware loaded and the MOSFETs are looking pretty good. Because if we go up uh, one more to 300 gigahash, we're pulling about 168 watts. But then our MOSFET temperatures are sitting at 64 degrees Celsius. Same thing as the board out temperature. Just keep an eye on that. If you don't want, if you don't have thermistors or, or, or K-type thermocouples to put on your MOSFETs, usually the board out temperature would give you a somewhat accurate. But look at that CPU temp of 74. Right now we are not on that because it's cooler this morning. Uh, again, I did all this testing around the same time frame, same air ambient, trying to mitigate the variables. Uh, but still, it does not want to do that 300 uh, gigahash mark. So we got two things here: either we're not getting enough power. Right, because we see the chip voltage, we can see the core clocks, we can see the chip temperatures, and we can see the MOSFET temperatures. Either that uh, veteran minor cable, which I do not recommend, you know, running the 340 plus gigahash version on that cable. Um, or if you do, remember that veteran minor is not liable because you're really pushing it beyond specs, uh, even though the cable is thick and the barrel plug, but the barrel plug itself was getting really toasty. I could touch it for a few seconds and I had to pull my finger away. So it's getting really hot. So even though the temperatures are a lot cooler, not only in the MOSFET, but the chips compared to uh, last night, I believe that is mitigating or stopping us from hitting the 300 giga hash plus. So just to round up, 300 giga hash, about 168 watts, 63, almost 64 degrees Celsius on uh, the MOSFETs. And look at how close it is to the board out temperature. Chip temperatures hottest was 74. That's not very comfortable. Uh, then the 280 giga hash, uh, 57.7 or 58 Celsius, really close to the board out temperature, 150 watts, uh, still sitting around at 69 degrees on the hottest chip. And then 270, 57.4 on the MOSFETs, 144 watts, very similar to the board out temperature. Hottest chip again at that 70. So I think if we replace the thermal paste on that chip, it'll be good. 260 giga hash, 56.1, 56.2 uh, uh, Celsius, about one degree more than the board out temperature, but not too far off. And then a 250 uh, board out temperature, 54, same as the MOSFET, 54, 134 watts. And hottest chip was 65 degrees Celsius. So that is what I got for you as far as those firmware. I still got to do the 300 retest uh with uh making sure that everything is in check trying to drop the temperatures by replacing the thermal paste as well as uh maybe swapping out the power supply we'll see what other variables there are but the board out temperature can kind of give you a good idea of what the mosfets are running at but do you remember these these thermistors are not sitting inside the chip they're sitting on top which isn't a hundred percent accurate gauge or way to to see the actual temperatures these mosfets might actually be a lot higher for example on a 300 giga hash one where we're saying 63.2 we might actually be at like 70 maybe 68 70 inside or at the uh the pcb level inside the chip which if these get too hot and we're pushing the 340 360 giga hash one you can bet your bottom dollar that you're going to burn up your pcb or those mosfet chips um or the power delivery in general not cooling it properly, not adding heat sinks, not adding good air airflow, stuff like that. Those small fans can only do so much. That's why replacing 120 will work. But that's going to do it for today's video. Just wanted to cram as much data as I can into this particular one. I will uh, replace the thermal paste, put my fans back on, and go up with the 300, 320, 340, 360 as far as I can within uh safety range or within the range of safety thank you so much hit the like button on the way out make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date so let's check out links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here and i'll catch you in the next one take care